Howdy, Trent with Faith Takes Flight here. It is a beautiful sunny day uh, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And today we're going to tackle the task of putting up a couple of solar cells, uh, solar panels on top of our Coachman Brookstone 395RL. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of how to do this because there's lots of videos on YouTube that I reviewed and you can review on how to do all these different, uh, uh, like how to pick solar panels, um, what kind of wiring to use, how to how to make the connections, etc. I'm going to give you an overview of how to do this and uh, show you where I ran the wire. So if there's anybody out there with the same fifth wheel, they can, they can follow that uh, and figure out where to run the wire. So let's get started. I'm going to just give you an overview of the products that I used. I'm going to switch the camera around here. Okay. These are just uh, various connectors, um, battery connectors, uh, wiring connectors, screws, etc. These are the Z clamps. Uh, they're going to be used to put the solar panel down on the roof. I went with a with an 8 gauge wire. This is a UV rated wire so it can sit outside in the sunlight. Of course you got your die core. Uh, you got a crimper tool for the MC4 connections. 30 amp fuse to protect uh, your equipment. This here is a GoPower uh, cable entry box. That's uh, that's because I'm not going to use any existing vent. I'm going to drill a new hole for the wiring. I went with a GoPower uh, 30 amp solar controller because it's also going to run my inverter. So I don't need two separate controllers, one for the inverter, one for the solar. I can just use one with this. It makes it nice. And then here's all the MC4 connectors. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on how to put those together because there's plenty of uh, plenty of videos online already how to do that. And then over here, I went with, we're gonna go with two 160 watt panels for starters. That's gonna bring us up to 320 watts and I can add a third one in there uh, to bring me almost up to 500. It should bring me up to 480 watts uh, it'll be under 30 amps, so this solar controller will be fine. We're going to hook these, uh, these panels up in parallel, not in series. We're going to hook them up in parallel. Um, a lot of people are wondering about cost. How much did all this cost? With these two panels and all the wiring and everything I just showed you, we're looking at about 750 bucks and that's gonna give us 320 watts. Uh, I could easily add another panel and that would give us a ton of solar power. I could add another panel um, and we'd still have the whole project under $1,000. So not bad for adding solar, especially if you do it yourself. All right, so on top of this fifth wheel, we have lots of real estate for putting up solar panels. I could put some in the middle here, um, then still have walking room on both sides of it. Right here is where my entry point is gonna be for the wires. So this plate right here is gonna end up coming down right here, and the wiring will come up into this plate and go down. Uh, this area over here is where I've selected to put the two panels up. That shadow is me, it's not the it's not the venting. So you always want to be careful where you put your panels. Make sure that uh, the venting's not gonna get in the way. So I think this will be a good place. So I wanted to show everybody where I ran the wires. Um, this is the loft area, as you can see. This wall that adjoins it is hollow. And if we can shine some light in there, you can see this is where they've run a lot of the wires. This wall is hollow and it goes all the way to the roof. And it continues all the way down 
uh, into a storage area underneath the underneath the fifth wheel, which makes it really nice to run wires from your roof uh, to the front of the to the front of the fifth wheel. I'm going to show you inside here where the wires coming down. Okay, that right there is the roof, and I drilled two holes through it, and you can see one wire is coming down right now, and that's the wire I've got. Uh, the flashlight on and then as you can see they have a hole cut and a bunch of wires running down there so it's a perfect location all right in case you're curious here's a final shot of running the wires through the um, through the compartment storage underneath just use these clamps that secure down with the single uh, I use a self-tapping screw on them and I was able to run both positive and negative wires through there and then drill holes through there. By the way, this wire right here is actually a wire for my inverter controller. There it is, nice and clean. All right, update on the progress. So you can see we've got the solar controller mounted here, let me back up so you can see where I'm actually at. I'm underneath uh, the front and storage compartment. So, you can see wires coming in there. Let's go all the way to the roof. No brakes. 8 gauge. Coming into the solar controller. And... You can see I had to make a gap in my mount here so that the wires could go behind and still mount on the solar controller. I think the solar controller is made to be mounted indoors and go onto a wall. Uh, the problem I had is that I didn't have a place where... I had a place where I could put it, uh, but if you do any reading about solar controllers, it's always recommended that they're placed as close to your battery pack as possible and most people say five feet or less and I didn't have anywhere in my RV where it'd be five feet or less I know a lot of installs out there do them like near fridges because it's easy but you are losing um, some voltage when you do that because of the long run so right here we are right next to our battery pack you can see my battery array here set up of uh, four six volt uh, golf cart batteries uh, two hooked up in series and then uh, two in parallel to get you your full six volts i think we're at about 400 amps worth uh, with those four batteries now to complete the boondocking uh, dry hookup solar you always need an inverter uh, or else you can't run your ac power components so I've gone with a 3000 watt. It's upside down because I mounted it upside down. Um, it's a go power, 3000 watt. Yeah, I went with the pure sign inverter uh, so it's easier on your electronics. The crazy thing about these is that you got to use 4 aught uh, gauge cable. To hook it up so as you can see it's a pretty beefy cable run hooked up to there here's my here's my two coming in for my solar one on each side uh, positive negative on the two sides of the batteries there you go uh, inverter battery pack solar controller got the solar panels down whenever you are putting a hole in your roof remember Dicor is your friend so I put some Dicor down first put the panels down on it drilled uh, the wood screw down in and then put Dicor as you can see all over on top too so panels are panels are on the awning side, the entry side of the RV. 
they're tilted a little bit. What we'll do is whenever we're dry camping is uh, we'll try and remember to point this side of the RV towards the sun. That way we'll pick up a little bit more power. Uh, next step is going to be hooking up the wires. As you can see, we're going right into the roof there. Now that the install is done, I wanted to go back and touch on a few things that I forgot about uh, when we were doing the install. Number one is budget. When you're trying to add up the cost for doing your solar install, don't forget that there is currently a 30% tax uh, credit uh, for solar installs and RVs are considered a second home. So even if you're putting them on your RV, you can take it as a tax credit. 30% uh, off is a pretty huge discount right now, so don't forget about that. Uh, second thing is the wire gauge that you use. Most solar kits come with a 10 gauge wire. I went with an 8 gauge wire. Uh, I did that based on the research that I had done. Uh, plus my runs were longer, like 30 feet. Um, 10 gauge wire is going to be fine if you're, wish, if you're keeping your run shorter and you're not putting a lot of amperage through it. Um, but if I add another panel to it, I could be up to 30 amps, over 30 feet. Um, thicker is always better. You want to have the biggest bandwidth possible and 8 gauge wire is, is just going to help out in getting all that power from your solar cells down to your batteries. Uh, so just a quick overview. Um, for some reason it was difficult for me to figure out all the components that I needed for just a simple solar setup. I think because there's so many different ways to do it. But basically you need a solar panel. Uh, that takes the rays from the sun, magically converts it into electricity, uh, sends it down a wire. Now you can't take that wire and plug it directly onto your battery because uh, it won't know how to charge it. So you need one other component and that's a solar controller. And the solar controller manages that electricity coming from the solar cells, panels, and charges your batteries. That's it. It's a pretty simple setup. Um, it can get complex, but in its basics, that's it. I want to give you guys a final shot of the final install. Everything's secured down. Got my entry plate secured down. Plenty of die core around it. You'll notice on my wiring, I haven't used any fasteners to fasten it to the roof. There's multiple ways that you can do this. You can buy fasteners, but then you're going to have to create more entry points into your roof. Um, I'm simply just taking die core and securing it to the roof so it doesn't flop around in the wind, and that should suffice. So, thanks for watching. Uh, again, check us out on faithtakesflight.com. Post any questions you've got, and uh, good luck with your projects.